Hi again, welcome back to EdTech School. Today I'm going to talk about crossword puzzles. Not the ordinary ones, the cool ones. Crossword puzzles are a great way to introduce teaching subjects, learn vocabulary, practice spelling of words, and even flex your students' logical reasoning muscles. Whether you teach languages, science, math, or any other subject, using crosswords in your class is always entertaining. Here are some fun examples. Oh, uh, before I start, these crossword puzzles are made with book widgets. Of course, there are tons of other online crossword makers, so don't feel limited. First up, language crosswords. Language classes are probably the most obvious place where crosswords can be useful and fun. By finding words based on clues, students can playfully learn new vocabulary in their native language or foreign language. What's more, by fitting the letters on the board, they also focus on the exact spelling of the words. With a classical crossword, you can give clues about words around a given topic in a certain language. For example, when teaching about the kitchen in English class, you could create a crossword like this one playing next to me. When teaching foreign languages, you could do the same and describe the foreign words in the foreign language itself. Or you can create a crossword that translates between languages by providing the clues in a different language than the words. You can also make crosswords for science. If language teachers can create crosswords to teach vocabulary, science teachers can use crosswords as well to teach terminology. Biology, physics, chemistry and so on, they all have their own terms to memorize and so they are all great candidates for crosswords. Chemistry, for example, is notorious for having a lot of stuff to commit to a memory. One of the basics you have to learn are the elements of the periodic table. Why not put the symbols and their names in a crossword? Geography also has a lot of names to remember. Countries, cities, continents, mountain regions, rivers and so on. For example, if your students need to learn about capital cities, make them guess it in a crossword. Like science, math also has specific terminology for which you can create crosswords. However, by playing with numbers, you can also do some more out-of-the-ordinary crosswords as well. For example, you could create a list of arithmetic problems of a certain level and let your students fill in the solution. This puts your students' brain cells at work and gives a fun twist to simply writing down solutions to a long list of arithmetic problems. Don't forget the kids. A crossword usually has sentences or other words as description of words to fill in. Unfortunately, this makes crossword challenging to play for our younger students who are only learning to read the and write the, their first words. And yet, crosswords would be a great way for them to learn basic spelling. That's where emojis come in. Emoji graphically describes simple words. Many simple words have an emoji symbol. By using emoji as clues, you can quickly create a crossword that is easy enough to play for the smaller ones. If you're a real artistic talent and are willing to put in some extra time and effort, you can even draw your own clues like in this example. Up for a challenge? So far, the crosswords I've shown are quite easy if you know your material. Each clue typically maps only a few possibilities and especially if you already have a few letters, the answer is pretty obvious. However, you can spice things up by making the clues ambiguous, such that there are many possibilities. The only way to know what to fill in is to either know a few letters or to apply logical reasoning skills to eliminate possibilities. For example, suppose you're teaching counting in Spanish. Instead of giving the English numbers as clues, you could simply not give any clues at all. You need to try to eliminate the possibilities. These puzzles keep them excited by making their logical deduction skills work and they're learning their numbers while playing Sherlock Holmes. Remember the first EdTech School video? We talked about using icebreakers in the classroom to make students acquainted with each other on the first day of school. Besides games such as Bingo or Hangman, crosswords can also be a fun way for students to get to know each other's names. You could use descriptions of the students as clues and let them fill in the first names. Or you could list the first names and leave the last names to be fitted in the crosswords. 
So, that was it for this week. Don't forget to read the blog post for all the examples. You can find it as a link in the comments. Click the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss the next episode. Thanks for watching!